Okay. Um, hello, everyone. Thank you for coming to this uh, panel uh, uh, with the Latin American space agencies, specifically from the ones from South America, Mexico, and Costa Rica. Uh, today, we're going to talk about Earth observation and space applications for Latin America. But before starting, I would like to give the floor to our president, uh, Juan de Dalmau, to, to welcome our, our guest tonight. Juan, please. Uh, greetings and uh, buenos dias, buenas tardes to everybody. I can see almost uh, 60 people around the table and probably some more on YouTube. It is great to see a dedicated panel to uh, space agencies and to uh, space activities uh, in, uh, in Latin America. Thanks very much to Camilo, our ambassador from Colombia, for the idea and the organization. It's going to be a great discussion. Back to you, Camilo. Thank you, Juan. So tonight we have the honor to have um, Dr. Pilar Zamora Acevedo. Uh, she is a PhD um, in law with emphasis in financial law from the Sergio Arboleda University in, in Bogota. She's also a specialist in administrative law from the University of Salamanca in Spain. She also has a master in international contracts with, uh, in the Republic of China. And she's also a lawyer from the uh, Sergio Alboleda University in Bogota. Um, she uh, is executive director of the Colombian Space Agency of Private Initiative, and she has more than 15 years of experience in the public and pri private sector. We also have uh, uh, Mr. C Carlos Alvarado Briseño. He works at the Department of Innovation and Business Development of the Costa Rican Institute of Electricity. He's also the former president and founder of the Central American Association for Aeronautics and Space uh, and Director General of the Costa Rican Society of Engineers and Architects. Uh, Carlos is also a graduate, a, a graduate from Harvard University at the John, uh, John F. Kennedy School of, uh, of Government, class 2018. He was awarded with the John F. Kennedy Fellowship in recognition of his academic and professional potential. We also have uh, we, uh, we, with us tonight uh, Mr. Mario Areola uh, from the Mexican Space Agency. He uh, he's the NASA Youth Ambassador uh, since 1971. He, he's university academic, lecturer, tutor, author. He's also the editor of the magazine Hacia el Espacio of the Mexican Space Agency. Uh, he's a communications and electronics engineer with postgraduate studies in telecommunication systems, business, and international relations in different institutions and countries. Uh, we also have uh, Mario Inver from Venezuela. Uh, he, he's an aeronautical engineer with a, ma uh, with a magister in, in government, and he's also a PhD in manufacturing engineering and, aeron and of aeronautics and astronautics. Um, Ma uh, Mariano works at, uh, as a commercial development officer for the Bolivarian uh, Agency for Space Activities in Venezuela. He, he was appointed as a program manager for the development of the already launched in 2017 BRS, BRSS2 satellite, the second Venezuelan remote sensing satellite. Finally, but not least, we have Alejandro, Alejandro Roman from, Port, uh, from Paraguay. He's a computer programming and bachelor of systems an uh, analysis from the Polytechnic Faculty of the National University of Asuncion with several specializations and updating courses in technology, aviation systems, and space in America, Europe, and Asia. He started Civil Aviation Administration at the Singapore Civil Aviation Academy. He's also a Master of Business, business Administration uh, and a specialist in higher education and a specialist in geographical information systems and remote sensing with more than 25 years of professional experience. So as you can see, we have a great panelist tonight and I would like to give the floor to Dr. Pilar Zamora from the Colombian Space Agency. And she will be talking about how the country and how the agency are facing some, some challenges on, on agricultural remote sensing. So Dr. Dr. Zamora, please, the floor is yours. Hi, thank you for the invitation. Thank you for having me in organization. Yeah, it's a really one pleasure to be here. Uh, I share my Dr. Zamora, we cannot hear you very well. I think that we, we, have, a, we have a problem with, with, your, with your feedback. With your audio? No, 
know, maybe um, I think it's because of your headset. So maybe. Uh, maybe now you, you can listen to me. Great. We hear you clear and yes. perfect. Yeah, that's great. Thank you, Dr. Samona. Thank you. And now you can see my, my presentation. Yes. Uh, so but, but we, we see it in, 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 can you please go to presenter mode? Yes. No. Okay. Great. Fantastic. Thank you. Okay. Um, with my, my presentation is about the Earth observation and space application for Latin America. The agenda that I will show to you are uh, our presentation, the specific applications that now we have about in, in education, in agriculture, and in the transfer of knowledge. The Colombian Space Agency is a, one entity from a private sector, and our propose is a propose a, is a develop a project for the aerospace industry in Colombia. We want really to do projects with all uh, technology uh, in the space in Colombia, specifically uh, in uh, agriculture, in education, in connectivity, uh, in, uh, the, in, in, in uh, the integration uh, with all uh, technologic products. And this is uh, a share with uh, our alliance that now we have. Uh, we have one, one first point that for us is really important and is the agriculture sector. We think in the Colombian Space Agency that Latin America is very important in the world, not just for the technology. We think that the technology need to have one propose. And for us, the propose is the social propose. Uh, social and economic for us is uh, it's one union that we need to do and we need to found with the cooperation program with the international community. And now we have the, the to do to, to do and to propose how we can take the aerospace technology for our, our agriculture. In Colombia, mm. I don't know specific in the rest of the countries in the Latin America, but in Colombia, we just use the 20% of our land uh, for, for, the fa for our farmers. We don't have one uh, technologic uh, use in the, with, with the aerospace uh, applications uh, for our territory. Uh, by that reason, we now have one platform that the name is uh, Vision Agro. And with that platform, uh, with Vision Agro, we can uh, to do and to share technology to our farmers. How? Uh, our propose is uh, to have uh, monetary uh, technology in the in the lands. For what? This is very important, and it's for financial inclusion. We think that we need to to share and to have one focus in the financial inclusion, because we need to do that the farmers convert in the the um, in the commercial sector, but really important in our. Uh, country. By that reason, we now have one uh, one uh, application that now the, the application has uh, 5,000 uh, farmers in Colombia in, uh, in total territory. And we have uh, technical support to the farmers. We have uh, technical information with the farmers for the political of the state. And we can really uh, not just to have uh, uh, information. We have uh, with, uh, uh, intelligent, uh, with the IA um, process, we can share information with the farmers, but we can take the farmers the same to one partnership. And for us, this is really important because we, we think that the farmers really are the, the future in Colombia. And we think that this is one first point that we we can start to cooperate in all the region. Uh, this is our, our first point uh, for, for this panel. And uh, the, the second point that for us is really, really, really important. Uh, I think that this is, is the same important to the agriculture and is the education. Uh, Colombia now have uh, one 
one education that the for my think and for the studies uh, about uh, all the development in Colombia uh, are in the OSD uh, uh, no, with one development no so high in uh, in the PISA uh, proofs in the PISA test and now in the STEM um, in the STEM statistics we need really one support in that it's uh, important that the STEM education will be really uh, the first and the, and to be in the political uh, plans for the government, but not just for the government, really more for the private sector. For example, in Colombia, the science and the mathematics are in the in the in the last position uh, in the not just in Colombia and the OCD too. And for us, it, this is this is very bad because we think that this is this will be the first position that we need to be. Uh, the, and by that reason, we have one program now that the name is Aprendiendo con Galileo. And Aprendiendo con Galileo have the focus in the STEM program. STEM for, for all the things that, uh, that I told you, but more because we really need to, to do that the, the love to, for the science with our child and with the young people in Colombia. By that reason, we think we create the, the Aprendiendo con Galileo program for to we have a, a, we get a sense of virtual reality uh, for the schools, but for the schools, for the public schools in Colombia, for democrat democratize all education about a public school and private school in Colombia, and for have more, more, more mathematics, more scientists, etc. Uh, in in all our country, we we really create. Uh, we really think that uh, the engineer programs they uh, can have one really effect in our PIP uh, in our country. This is the reason that now we create uh, that program. I don't know, Camilo, if I have time for share the, the video uh, because I know that I have uh, five minutes. <laughs> um, how long is the video? Uh, two minutes. Maybe um, maybe we can try to, to, to see if at the end of the panel we have some minutes and we can, we, we can, we can share it at the end. Is this okay uh, with you, Dr. Uh, Samara? Yes, yes, of course. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> The purpose is to, to, to generate love to the study, to, to, to all our students in the public um, schools in Colombia. And this is the reason they Aprendiendo con Galileo. We think that the applications uh, uh, not just are for the industry. We need that all people, the young people, the startup people, and all people have no more knowledge about aerospace industry and aerospace um, applications too. Uh, this is my, my presentation. Thank you very much, Camilo. Thank you so much, Dr. Zamora. Um, now I would like to invite to the floor um, Alejandro Román from the Paraguayan Space Industry uh, Agency. Alejandro, please, the, fl the floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, please uh, confirm if my sh my screen is sharing. Um, yes, your screen is sharing, and we are seeing your PowerPoint, not in presenter mode yet. Okay, now it's presenter mode. Right? Yes, perfect. Thank you. Okay. Well, uh, first of all, I want to thank uh, Camilo and also Mr. Juan de Dalmo for the invitation. It's for us, it's an honor to be here. Um, I, I will go very fast in the, of, with the slides because of the time constraint. Um, this is a, a, a presentation that shows that in Paraguay, we started two years ago with the Paraguayan Space Agency. Paraguay is a small country in the middle of, the, of South America. We have a lot of strengths as a country, um, especially in the agricultural sector. And that's why it's very important for us the space sector, because not only in the SDG vision to, to accomplish the SDG, we need the space technology, science and technology, 
but also in the agricultural sector, sector and another sector of the country. We are focusing in two lines, capacity building in aerospace engineering, basic areas, aerospace engineering, engineering, and also capacity building in space applications. Uh, since the creation of the Paraguayan Space Agency, we, we was created to understand, design, propose, and implement policies and programs uh, in space and aerospace. And also we have approved our space policy uh, this year for the presidential decree and a strategic plan for the agency. We have four pillars of, 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 of work. The first and most important one is the capacity building. We need to have uh, of the, our project. And the second one is the development of the, of the sector. And we need to build our first infrastructure and also all the system has to be sustainable. Well, in aerospace engineering, the first thing we have done is uh, achieve submission, our first mission. Um, we are working with QTEC, it's a Kyushu Institute of Technology. We are following the Costa Rican uh, model because uh, we knew about the, the first Costa Rican uh, satellite. And in Latin America, we, we're facing um, some, some of the same challenges, I think. Uh, we follow this model and we joined the, the project. We sent two engineers, two young engineer, engineers to Japan, and they are working with the, this is the engineering model of our first satellite. And this is the flag model already, uh, already finished. This, uh, we are expecting to launch in the uh, end of, the, of this uh, 2020. Um, the satellite has, has 10 missions. I will not uh, speak about any, uh, all of them, but I want to mention one of them. It uh, has to be with um, public health. And in Paraguay and in the region, we have a disease that's uh, called Chagas disease. And this disease uh, has no cure. And we, with the satellite, we will put the traps in the field to detect the presence of the vector. And this, those traps will communicate each other, send to the satellite the, the, the location and the a flag. One is the, 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 the bug is, is, is detected and zero is no bug detected. And the public health authority can go and take countermeasures with the, uh, in the preventive this is a small uh, graphic in the town that we will uh, put this trap on. It's an indigenous town. And this is the patch of the, our first uh, mission. Um, those are the institution that has is involved in this project. And we are very proud of our, our first mission. We are working also, this is a, our first infrastructure. This is our uh, operation monitoring and control center in, the, in, in Asuncion, Paraguay. And also in the University of Asuncion, National University of Asuncion, we also have uh, a small uh, infrastructure with uh, the ground station there and in the, in the location that I spoke before. Okay, um, we are working, this is a, the ground station team and this is the ground station two in 400 kilometers from the capital of Asuncion. Uh, this is a, uh, the, the group of engineers, three of them is Paraguayan, uh, has, uh, they, they have trained in Japan with uh, a QTEC also. And we are working very hard in the international sector because we believe that the cooperation can bring us faster and cheaper to our goal. Uh, we went to the Unispace, uh, we went also, we, we have a conversation with DLR, ISRO, uh, with uh, Satellogy in Argentina, with ESA, with NASA, with NEST in France, with JAXA, um, also with the International Center of Theoretical Physics in Italy. Uh, we are looking forward to work with all the, the space agencies, not only in the region, but also in, in the world. We visited uh, the NASA headquarters in, 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 Washington, in Washington and also the Garo Space Flight Center. Now we are we are focusing very much in in, in the in, in the capacity building, like I said, and in terms of earth observation, we are starting to work in deforestation, land management, panoramic epidemiology, precision farming, and this uh, disaster management. Last year we have this uh, flooding in, in in Paraguay, and we activate the international charter to 
major disaster in space. Uh, we produce many products and, and we help it, our authorities with this uh, disaster. And the flooding is, is over and we started with the wildfires. Again, we, we activate the charter and we produce this, uh, those maps to help the uh, Paraguayan authority to unify the effort and also to better the response. And we are uh, uh, delivering this information to this uh, community crisis uh, uh, bureau and also with, with a digital and, and physical uh, form to be used in the field. And also we are working with the COVID-19 uh, pandemic uh, to help the Ministry of Health and other authorities to, to tackle this problem. And we are working very hard with uh, outreach and awareness. And to, to, it's important for us that the people and the decision, maker, and the, um, decision makers understand why it's important the space for the country. There are many opportunities for the country. And also we are looking forward to involve young professionals, more young professionals in this. And in conclusion, Paraguayan Space Agency is very young in age, but we are in all the, the major forums of the space. And we participate in, in, in many uh, events in space related, and we are working with the major uh, space agencies in the world. I think with the cooperation and collaboration, we can go and uh, we can achieve our goals uh, faster. Uh, we are, ha have done uh, a lot, but we need to do even more. And um, this is a closing remarks, just there is a driving force more powerful than steam, electricity and nuclear power. This, uh, this force is the will. And we have the strong will to, to work together with the Latin American space agency and other institution to, to make our goals done. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Alejandro. That was very insightful to know about the space activities and how Paraguay is growing in just two years, how, how fast it's growing um, in the region. Thank you so much. Um, now I would like to give the floor to Mariano. Please, Mariano, this, the floor is yours. Okay, hello, and thank you very much, uh, Mr. Camilo and uh, President Juan de Dalmo for your invitation. And I will share now my presentation. It's, uh, it's a little bit long, but I will go very fast so we can keep the, the time. Can you, can you see that now? Yes, it's perfect. Yes, you can see. Yeah. Great. Okay, and um, I'm very glad to, to give this speech to you and uh, very honored for the ISU. I think it's a very, very good uh, opportunity for, for us to have this connection with Venezuela. And um, so I'm, I'm going to, to give you a short introduction about our agency and also to discuss a little bit about our Venezuelan space program. And after that, I will give you more information about the Venezuelan remote sensing program and also finally some data and application samples of what we do in Venezuela. So first, uh, we can summarize our work in five different areas. As you can see here, in very science, education, and development, we are working with some universities together. And we also provide some uh, education short courses. There is a research and innovation area where we develop different projects related to space technology, uh, the quality standardization and regulation area and space systems, which is uh, about the operational systems and also space applications, which I will uh, discuss a bit later. So this is an uh, overview of where we are in Venezuela. We have different uh, infrastructure in the, in the country for different uh, application area. Uh, we have developed uh, so far three satellites, uh, First was uh, telecommunication, and the second and the third was uh, remote sensing, launching 2012 and 2017. And also, we are working on the space infrastructure for long-term development. 
These are the main specifications for our two remote sensing satellites. Um, you can see where there is a high resolution and also middle resolution for the two of them. So I will, I will show you later some of the data. And we created with these two satellites a constellation, of course, and this is a, our ground station located in Venezuela for the data reception. So here you can see some of the data catalog we can, we can provide and actually we are providing to the national and international users for the two satellites. And here we can see some of the data and application samples, which are uh, very wide from uh, hydro, hydrological irrigation, forest resources, and so on. Also, we have some uh, specific applications related to the uh, thematic maps, like you can see on the right side. And especially, uh, I, I will focus on this la last um, slides on the agriculture applications. You can see here some of the crop monitoring data we have. Also, uh, using some of our software algorithms, we can do some of the land use classification for the agriculture and even other applications. Here you can see other products related to the chlorophyll A monitoring, and the surface uh, real temperature monitoring, water thermal pollution of industrial products. And here you can see the NDVI products, which is a very standard. Other products related to the agriculture for the uh, different uh, waste for the distribution and so on. Of the biggest image in terms of the lowest resolution, which means we can have a very big area cover uh, with the Miranda VRS one satellite, and that means we can have complete state cover. So there are many other data samples. Just last, uh, we I, I would like to mention about this. Uh, work we are doing with machine, machine learning also for agriculture and also different other applications, which I think can be very useful for, for the agriculture production and monitoring. So thank you very much and sorry for the, the time constraint. I was very fast and there is my contact. If you need anything, I would be uh, ready to, to help. Thank you very much. No problem, Mariano, you were right on time. Thank you so much. Um, it was great to hear uh, about what is uh, Venezuela doing because uh, I think we all can recall that we always hear bad news about Venezuela and it's, all, and it's also great to hear these kind of things that Venezuela is doing and how you guys are, uh, are, are enhancing the, uh, the space technology and how you are using it in, in the country. This is great, thank you so much. Now I would like to give the floor to Mario from the Mexican Space Agency. Don Mario, please, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Uh, let me share my, my screen. Oh, um, Mariano, you, you are still sharing your, your screen. Yeah, thank you so much. Can you see it now? Uh, yeah, I see your email, Don Mario. <laughs> <laughs> okay. How about now? I'm still I'm still seeing your email. Um, Don Mario, we are looking we are looking at your presentation, but as the other the other exactly the other way around. Maybe you just <laughs> so Don Mario, do you see no worries? Do you see at the top of your screen which says cambiar de pantalla? Like at the top, it says like finalizar presentación, usar presentación, cambiar de pantalla. You can click on cambiar de pantalla and then it will switch. Like this? No, no, no. At the top of your, in, in, in la parte superior de su pantalla. Do you see which says cambiar de pantalla in the zoom? Let's see.
Sorry, guys. No problem, don Mario. So, do you see what it says? Any, any better? No, señor. ¿Sí ve donde dice cambiar de pantalla? No. En el Zoom. Dice cambiar de pantalla. Um, it's on the top left corner. Top left. Yes, so the third icon, the next one. Perfecto. Like this? Yes, perfect. Thank you so much. Thank you, Kalindi, for your priceless help. The floor is yours, Don Mario. Too, too small, the letters, sorry. sorry. No, the letters are perfect. We can see perfectly. Okay. Uh, first of all, thank you for the invitation. And um, I want to tell you that the Mexican Space Agency is a very um, new agency. The um, law that uh, allowed the existence of the agency has only 10 years was passed and the agency started operating just um, seven years ago. So um, we have a, um, a building that uh, will have a lab for image processing in this pandemic has uh, pushed forward the uh, opening of, uh, of this um, uh, regional unit for space development in the Mexican, uh, in the state of Mexico, just besides um, Mexico City. And we have this uh, antenna in the south of, southeast of Mexico. Uh, it's been um, overhauled to be able to get um, more images from different satellites. And the reason we need, uh, and, and we're interested in, um, uh, satellite images. Uh, the, well, this this will be the, um, uh, the the front of the building I'm, I'm telling you about. Is because we have um, considered several services that we could possibly provide, um, and it's in the Spanish, but um, eventually you can get a sense of uh, an idea of what we are trying to achieve. And the reason we're interested is, this is one of the, the reasons. This is an image that we got from JPL NASA after the earthquake of nine, uh, nine, 19, uh, uh, 2017. Uh, this is Mexico City and the, um, the colors, you can see uh, uh, yellow, uh, orange and red. It's buildings that uh, have moved uh, virtually different uh, heights and of course the ones in red are the ones that are uh, down to the ground so we we get a lot of uh, earthquakes uh, in different parts we have this type of um, use for the images it's a predictive analysis of uh, crops that's one of the applications we're interested in Sorry, uh, this is another one. We use um, the soil types of uh, different parts of Mexico. And um, so to be able to uh, better get the better use of it. And, uh, and um, we have two oceans. And when we get two big storms coming from each side, um, the thing can get very, very wet. So we need to uh, prevent this type of uh, phenomena and um, take action to prevent uh, life losses. We also have um, international collabor collaboration in this case with um, United Kingdom and for a big um, water uh, lake that is down in, um, in Chetumal as well. So that those are uh, main reasons why we um, are interested in um, having more capability of um, 
working with uh, satellite images. Um, we also have a lot of um, uh, disease carried by vectors, uh, like uh, Chagas uh, down south. So we will be very interested in working with uh, Dr. Roman. Um, we have some uh, developments uh, in that in that area. Um, and that, well, that's, um, that's going to be it. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Don Mario. Thank you for letting I, us know. I hurry a bit but because I know I, I only had five <laughs> minutes. <laughs> no, no problem. You're actually, you're actually on time. No problem, Don Mario. Thank you so much. So now I would like to uh, give the floor to our final guest, Carlos Alvarado Briseño from Costa Rica. Carlos, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Camilo. And it is a big pleasure being here with all the colleagues from the Latin American region. And thank you uh, very much to President Juan de Dalmau also for uh, this uh, invitation. I will share my screen. Let me see if you can um, see it. Okay. Can, can you see it? Put it in full screen. Can you see it in, for, in full screen? Yes. It looks perfect. Well, thank you very much. Um, well, as I mentioned before, my name is Carlos Enrique Alvarado. I'm the coordinator of the Aerospace Commission of the Costa Rican Society of Engineers and Architects. And, um, well, we were going to talk about what we have been doing in the Latin America, in the Central American region in the last uh, decade. Um, first, most uh, I would like to make an introduction um, about what has been the problem in our region. This has been a problem of education and politics. Uh, years, uh, many decision makers fail to identify the value presentation with some exceptions. We need Brazil, the example of Argentina from a long time ago compared with other um, Latin American countries. But uh, now for us, uh, this uh, is a, a necessity that goes uh, beyond the, the, the necessity of, of, of exploring space, of just doing, it, just doing it because it's a fancy thing. We uh, To, 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 we need to understand that developing space capacities is a matter of, of survival for the developing world. The, the forecast for our, for, for our world in the, in the next uh, years concerning climate change, concerning the social economic problems that we are facing make uh, a, a, a very kind of capacities. So this is why I'm glad, for example, to have been you know, focused on, on creating capacities, building uh, this kind of leverage in the country in order to, to, to be very solid in, in, in the next years uh, concerning these uh, challenges. Um, However, we are trying to be back on track again, the, the Latin American region. We see, for example, the Mexican Space Agency. We see in South America, for example, the Space Agency, Peru. Uh, we know that, for example, now there are not all the organizations in this map, but I just wanted to, to point out the presence of the capacities in space uh, matters. And for us in the Central American region, and I think um, this is uh, something common also for, for, for our neighbors, uh, we need to, to, to create capacities in the area of environment, uh, how we monitor our natural resources. Uh, we need also to know uh, how's our water, for example, because I mean the forecast in the, in the, in the Pacific uh, coast of Central America, for instance, in the, uh, in the next decades, we are going to see how um, the climate and the, and the environment will decrease a lot, the bio, the, the, um, bio development index, for instance. Uh, applications related to urban and transport planning, agricultural land use, for instance, Dr. Zamora, uh, she was explaining that in Carlos. Colombia, for example, they have been working on creating capacities in agriculture. Carlos? We, in, in, in 
Hello, can you hear me? Yes, sorry. Is we are having some connectivity issues uh, between oh. you and our server. Can you please uh, turn your video off to increase the bandwidth, please? I will so, do because that. we continue. We continue uh, hear your voice breaking up. No, I'm so sorry. Can no you problem, hear me Carlos. Yes, we can hear. We can hear you. Please Wonderful. continue. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, as I was mentioning before, for example, uh, Dr. Zamora was explaining that in Colombia, they have been working in agriculture, for instance. We share the same necessity. We know that we have a problem on land use, uh, in, in, in land use, natural disasters and prevention, marine spatial planning, coast and oceans activities. For example, those areas are uh, shared necessities for all in Central America, and we know that there is a potential uh, to develop capacities in that, in that field. Let me see if I can't, because I'm trying to, okay. Okay, uh, satellite projects in our region. Uh, the first uh, satellite of Central America, IRASU project, was a project that was developed by a decade, during a decade. In the case, I had the honor to be the leader of this project during 10 years. Uh, after that, this year, we had also uh, the opportunity to see how Guatemala, for instance, uh, launched their first satellite, the satellite Quetzal uh, Uno. It's a very interesting project developed by the University of Del Valle from Guatemala. Uh, I invite you to, 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 to look in internet of all the news. They have been do doing a, a wonderful job also in, in Guatemala, for instance, with this project. And now we are also developing the uh, first satellite of Honduras. And this is, this is a project that in the case I'm uh, also leading under the support of the Central American Integration System and a consortium of uh, public universities of the Central American region. And we aim to, to launch this satellite next year by 2021. Um, I would like also to, to, to explain a little bit about the experience of, of Project Irasu. Uh, as I mentioned before, this was a satellite that was launched in May 2018 from the International Space Station, and, and its scientific mission was related to, to monitor correlated CO2 levels and weather parameters measured on ground, and uh, we had by that time the opportunity to to work very, very uh, useful with uh, the Costa Rica Institute of Technology. Um, now that uh, our colleagues from the Paraguayan Space Agency were explaining the role of QTEC, the role of JAPSE that Dr. Mengucho has been playing a cornerstone role in our region. And now I'm seeing that he's also doing a wonderful job in, in South America too. Um, I also had the opportunity to sign an agreement with him in, in 2016 that uh, made possible the service of QTEC for the satellite uh, of Irasu project in Japan by that time, thanks to an agreement. And now, uh, of University of Costa Rica, the Universidad of San Carlos, which is the oldest uh, university in the Central American region. And of course, uh, we have the National Autonomous University of Honduras, which is the biggest uh, in, in, in most, like, like the biggest university in, in Honduras too. And in the participation of QTEC, uh, the Kyushu Institute of Technology. And thanks to the support of these organizations, now we are uh, working also with uh, the Costa Rican Radio Amateur and other organizations in the region to develop a mission under the support of the Central American Integration System and the Costa Rican Society of Engineers and Architects, which is the organization that launched the first uh, studies, the conceptual studies of this, uh, of this project. Uh, there are three concepts uh, of missions. Uh, we have first, uh, the first mission concept is monitoring weather variables in vulnerable remote areas, providing early warning during extreme weather events. Basically, it's a relay satellite that will work on uh, re the retransmission of these parameters to uh, a, a data logger and an antenna that will uh, send this information to the satellite to the CubeSat and then this downwind to a uh, ground station. The mission concept of Morazan is um, a post uh, disaster events, for example, when uh, the persons are uh, located in isolated areas after uh, 
a flu, um, the, the, the person, the people that will be uh, trapped by that, uh, there will have the opportunity to communicate uh, with the satellite using the radio amateur uh, infrastructure. And uh, the third mission concept that Morasan is developing is more an educational one. This uh, tries to, to get involved also students uh, in, the, in, in how to track satellites and how to download uh, sound codes, sound uh, files to, to be decoded into, into images in their cell phones. So imagine how those students will be inspired uh, when they uh, will have also the opportunity to get in contact with the satellite, the first satellite of Honduras. This is a very inspiring uh, project for, for also getting, getting engaged the students. So the successful cooperation experience that our region has shown in other fields, we want to replicate it into a new area of uh, integration of academic and technological efforts. And we feel that uh, we succeeding in this, uh, in this uh, endeavor, we are going to, to be an example for the rest um, of the world. Uh, finally, I would like just to end some points uh, regarding the Costa Rica National Space Policy Plan process. In my case, uh, my thesis at Harvard University was about this. My client was the Ministry of Science, Technology and Telecommunications. Um, and then after a big uh, consultation process and with uh, different actors, stakeholders in, in our country related with the space field from the industry, from the public sector, from the academia, from the civil society, uh, there was developed the value needs uh, that our region needs to, 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 to continue you know, developing. And there was identified also the national principles uh, that the country uh, needs to follow. And finally, there are some policy options to implement the national mechanism of a space uh, policy. So um, this uh, is a process that comes from sources of information and evidence. Uh, that's why, for example, in, 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 the, in the research I identified uh, that uh, most of the users of space applications in Costa Rica, they do this, uh, the purpose of, of, of these of this space applications are more related to access to uh, georeferences and for in, georeference information uh, available through satellite uh, services, basically imagery, satellite imagery for, for, for applications on Earth and, in, in many for environment, for instance, and for, for agriculture and urban planning. And um, there are also technology transfer and development of new products and applications. And the third, uh, around 30% of the responders said that they use the space applications for basic applied research. And as I okay. mentioned before, around 8%, can you hear me? Yes, sorry, is that um, we, because of the time constraint? <laughs> okay, I'm just finishing. And 80% okay. of, the, of, the, of the responders say that they use it for environment. So this provides a, a, a light for us, uh, for the National Space Policy Plan. Those are, are the four uh, niches that I was mentioned before for the Costa Rica Policy Plan. And uh, priority actions for each value niche. What is next? Well, we need to continue working on these uh, efforts. Uh, the country is now in a discussion. Now, actually, there is a project in the plenary, in the National Assembly, to uh, face agents in Costa Rica. And this is a discussion that, we, that is going to happen in the next months. And, and we, of course, we are going to, to track uh, the development of this uh, very closely. Thank you very much. And sorry for, for the time, by the way. <laughs> Thank you. No problem, Carlos. Thank you so much for your insightful presentation. It was great to hear what Central America is doing, not only Costa Rica, but also what Central America is doing on, on space applications. It's great. Now I would like to um, open the floor for a few questions. Um, I, I can see on the Slido platform that we have a few questions from our audience. Um, but before we jump into the audience uh, questions, I would like just to uh, throw a question to, uh, to all of you. It's like, uh, through the entire panel, we could see that you guys were talking about cooperation. That was like uh, one of the keywords that we could identify during the entire panel, cooperation. So under the light of this, I would like to ask, how do you see Latin America coming together to improve the access to space? Is it possible that we can all, all of us come together uh, maybe to create an, a, a regional space agency, to create access to space, human space flights, like how do you see that? Like how, how can you see Latin America coming together to improve the access to space? Uh, maybe Alejandro, please. 
Yeah, thank you, Camilo. I think it's a very good idea. Uh, when I was uh, in a meeting in two years ago, uh, somebody from the DLR says, why the Latin American, they, they are not doing anything about the uh, regional space agency. You are, you have a similar culture. You, you don't have uh, the, the language barrier. Um, you are facing um, similar challenges and maybe it's a very good idea to do it that like ESA, for example, in, in, in Europe has done. Um, it's not easy. It has a very political aspects to be done before, but maybe an association of the space agencies and, um, and the um, institution that is related to space is a good idea in, in like a, in a middle step of, of the, the final goal. For me, and I think, and I'm sure, uh, many people in Latin America is, 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 is thinking the same way. It's a very good idea to think in, in, in an association of the Latin America uh, space agency and institutions and to think in joint projects and, and, and to share knowledge and data. I think it's, I repeat, I think it's a very good idea. Thank you. Thank you, Alejandro. Um, Dr. Zamora, would you like to, to add something on that? I, I think that it, it's a great idea to have uh, one, uh, one uh, agency in the region, but I think that uh, before to do one, uh, one common agency, we can propose and to do one, one, uh, one, uh, one chapter or one program for knowledge transfer. Uh, I think that when uh, it, it's very interesting really, to see all presentations with the, from Mexico, from Paraguay, from from all places and, and our countries that really we have the same the same points to do, we have the, the same to dos in our countries, and I think that if really we can learn about uh, our problems, but in in our solutions, uh, we can do it. Maybe uh, your university can help to us to create one program for knowledge transfer uh, with any points uh, similar uh, in agriculture, in uh, urban uh, policies, uh, in education, in any point that for us really are one, one, program, one, one problem in, in our countries. And maybe when you see from Europe or from other place, we can a structure one program and we can learn and put in practice uh, the solutions I, I think that it, it, this is my, my, my recommendations or my thinkings uh, will be this is the, the in the first point and in the second point be, before to create one 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 agency in the region uh, will be to propose one project that integrate our first uh, knowledge and uh, or the result of the or, or uh, for the our program, uh, for example, if uh, now we have uh, the applications for the cities and the, for the for the, the transportation or for the climate, maybe we can to do one uh, one program for the for the seas or for the rivers in Latin America because all countries we have seas and rivers, for example. So I think that we have we can have one knowledge transfer programs in a specific with, with one structure with one process with one workflow with one maybe with entities that uh, in the middle to one MOU or to one uh, agreement with the cooperation we can to do fastly and we can share uh, experience and we can share experience not just with us and uh, mm -hmm. more with the support of other agencies or other region agencies example in Europe or example it happened in, with them um, in Africa uh, I think that for me uh, that will be my my uh, wish uh, uh, way for similar for that. similar like what uh, Carlos was, was saying uh, uh, earlier about knowledge transfer like Carlos for example how do you see like this happening between Latin American countries this knowledge transfer 
Thank you very much, uh, Camilo. Yes, um, actually, when I was uh, doing the presentation, um, I mentioned that uh, we need to identify our common necessities. When we identify our common necessities, we can work on common solutions. You know, working on a collective intelligence from our region and using our resources and our talent uh, to create these uh, integrational uh, policies. How we can do it, for example, I would like to, 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 to explain the example of what we're doing in Costa Rica and in Central America. We are working with the Central American Integration System, which is our regional political body, very important for us. And um, I'm very happy to announce, for instance, that this capacity and knowledge transfer we have been doing through that platform has been very powerful. For instance, uh, now we have here Mr. Juan de Dalmau, uh, and, and Mr. Juan de Dalmau came, for example, uh, witness what we have been doing in the last uh, months, negotiating with the International Space University a, a program. First, an agreement within SICA and the International Space University that is uh, actually is, is done. I'm very happy to, to, to announce that, and maybe Mr. Juan de Almao would like to refer to that. But this is targeting basically what we want to do, with it, which is uh, developing capacities for the entire region. We want to, to take advantage of these uh, areas and also the possibilities that we have a political integration body that is currently existing. You know? and, and this is going to be a, a, a greater, will increase in the scope of, of application, for example, in, from SICA. SICA now, the Central American Integration System signed an agreement with NASA. They signed an agreement also with uh, European Union. So we are working very, very closely with different space agencies in order to create a regional space development. So maybe this example will help us, you know, the Central American example, maybe we can, can be uh, replicated in the, in the region, but first and foremost, what we need to do is to identify the common uh, necessities and then, uh, you know, starting the discussion for, 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 for what will be the best way to implement the solutions for these common necessities. Thank you so much, Carlos. And I have to apologize um, with our audience and with our speakers. Um, we, it's almost, uh, the time is almost over. Um, thank you so much. I mean, this is okay, like, because if we don't have questions, like we have tons of questions to, that we would like to be, like keep going and going and going. But at the end of, of all is of the presentation that you have made, uh, you can be like the knowledge and update from these are communist based nations, especially from Costa Rica, Mexico, Colombia, Paraguay, Venezuela, um, was very valuable and more important, of course, than, than, than all the questions. But uh, again, I want to apologize with our audience. I have a lot of questions, but the time is over. Uh, I would like to uh, give the floor to, to Juan Dalmau, maybe to do a closing uh, remarks. Juan, please, the floor is yours. Muchas gracias, uh, everybody. It has been highly interesting for us to listen into your uh, statements and your good advice. Um, I think uh, the example that uh, uh, Carlos has just mentioned uh, through a very simple uh, memorandum that we signed recently with SICA, uh, uh, we believe is a good, a good uh, model that uh, we could establish with um, any other uh, player in, uh, in your region uh, so that we can um, discuss the, the needs, as Carlos was saying, but also uh, what Pilar said, uh, very interesting to find common uh, needs in the region. And uh, through the use of a virtual university that we are testing right now, thanks to you, uh, we're testing the power of uh, virtual conversations, but also the power of virtual uh, teaching and learning I think uh, there is so much we can do to help you in your countries reach your audience, whether it is young people or uh, academics or entrepreneurs or political decision makers. Uh, we are ready to work with you 